There's something about special purpose guns that I just really like. You know, we have all of our traditional what guns and how they evolved, uh, but having something that is made for a specific purpose is really cool. It has a really huge cool factor. And the U.S. Survival Rifle by Henry Repeating Arms is one of those type rifles. This rifle originally was designed by Eugene Stoner, the AR-7. They had made the AR-5, which was actually accepted by the U.S. Air Force as a survival rifle, but there were just a very few made. It shot the 22 Hornet. It was a bolt-action rifle, uh, a little bit different than this. Uh, this is semi-automatic. But one of the really cool things, and of course, many of you have already seen the AR-7. I mean, my goodness, they've been around since 1958. So this is not anything really new, but it is something that's really cool. And a lot of people are survival-minded now more than ever. And I think that this really is an exceptional rifle for that application. Comes in a pretty cool little box with a handle. Opens up, and pretty much what you get is the rifle uh, stowed away. There is a pretty good owner's manual in here just telling you how to break it down, how to clean it. One of the great things about the Henry is, is they have a lifetime guarantee on these rifles. Uh, unless you abuse it or mess it up, this carries the guarantee. You can send it back to Henry. They'll either repair it or replace it. And so that's a great thing. And of course it is made in the United States, made right here in the USA, obviously very important to a lot of people. Now it's only 16 and a half inches in length right here. Take the butt cap, pull it off, pull out your action, your barrel, and also you have two magazines which are stowed away right here. You can actually stow this away with a magazine in the action, so you can carry up to three magazines. So now here we have everything disassembled. The stock is made from an ABS plastic and that really helps with it to float. It is water resistant, but it's not waterproof. And that's one of the things that a lot of people mistaken is that these are waterproof. Uh, this is a very good seal and it does keep most of the water out. But again, it just really keeps the water from just staying and soaking, but it really maintains the floatability, especially if you're in a boat and you're on the water. It definitely floats. Of course, this is a shallow pool riding right on the bottom a little bit. One thing it is not though is waterproof. It's water resistant. You can see a little bit of water in here. One of the things about this gun though is it's pretty weather resistant. But you're only getting just a little bit toward the back. Really the barrel and the action are fairly dry except for where it was butted up against the butt plate. Now I don't know if you can tell or not but it is perfectly dry inside the stock. Now the barrel is also ABS plastic, which seems kind of funny, but it has a steel sleeve going down the center. So that really helps keep it really lightweight. But it's also Teflon coated as well. Of course it has a barrel nut, this metal, and then we have an aluminum alloy uh, action. This is also Teflon coated. And all of this keeps it waterproof, it keeps it weatherproof. But now the ABS plastic also protects it from extreme temperatures, hot or cold. The action is very simple. The uh, bolt actually retracts in uh, for stowing it away and then it pulls out this way. That way you can pull it and then it just pops back in when you need to. There is no last round bolt hold open. And one of the things about this rifle, and you know, I've seen a lot of different reviews, I've read a lot about it. I did a review on this probably five years ago on one of the original Charter Arms uh, survival rifles. And which, by the way, Charter Arms made a really poor example of these. And it's one of the things that Henry Arms did was back engineer the entire rifle. So, you know, it really made it better. And I'll tell you, at the range, I had zero malfunctions with this rifle. It's a standard blowback design. Uh, it does have a rail here on the top, so you can put a scope on it if you want to. Uh, has the safety right here. You pull it back, it's on safe, forward, it's fire. Here's the mag release. It's just very intuitive right here. You can pull out your magazine, replace your next magazine. Uh, magazines are steel eight round mags. One of the big problems with the AR-7 originally was reliability. And a lot of that had to do with the magazines. Uh, one of the problems is, is the magazine feed lip is right here on the magazine. Uh, so any kind of damage or anything to the magazine can cause problems with malfunction. Another thing is, which Henry took care of, was they have a wire piece that comes up 
all the way through and that will align the bullet and keep it in line with the chamber. Uh, that is a huge advantage with these magazines. Uh, they usually run about $19 a piece, I believe. I haven't really priced them street price. But uh, they used to make some extended magazines. I haven't seen any uh, 15 rounds or 10 rounds. That would be nice, but it wouldn't go into the stock system. The other thing is they do make a five rounder uh, for this rifle. So it gives you, gives you a few more options. It's so compact and it's so lightweight. Just pull the butt cap off. Of course, you'll know that it's not sealed because of this orange. Pull your receiver out, barrel. The two magazines actually face forward, so if you have rounds in it, you'll know immediately. There's a little groove that holds them into place. Get the action seated fully, then start to turn. It takes a couple of, quite a few turns to get it into place, but not too long. There we go. Take your barrel, slide it in, make sure that the little notch is set. Just tighten it hand tight and you're ready to go. Right here, pull your bolt out, take your magazine, slide it in, put your safety on right here. Don't forget your butt plate. All good and snug. And of course, disassembly is just in reverse order. It's real easy. Now one of the complaints about the AR-7 is the thickness of the stock. And you'll notice it is fairly thick. In fact, there's this large piece that comes out here. Well, that's by design. And that's where the barrel actually fits. They wanted to make this as compact as possible. And this was a great way to do it. Uh, the Again, it is thick here, but really, even though I have medium hands, I really didn't have any trouble grabbing the rifle. Uh, also, with 22 long rifle, the recoil is so mild, you really shouldn't have any trouble. Uh, it just kind of fits really nice here. The trigger is not anything special. Uh, it's just a steel piece. It's a decent little trigger pull, but it's a really crisp snap. Uh, you know, really, I was finding that I was getting very good accuracy out of this rifle, uh, and I think a lot of that had to do with the sights. You have a rear aperture right here that's protected. You can see the little small aperture. There is a plate right here that's actually a metal plate that's screwed in. You can loosen this screw and change the elevation of your sight that way. The front sight is just a really blaze orange blade sight, and it really shows up in the aperture. It even has some serrations right here to keep glare down. Uh, sometimes in the bright sunlight that can be a little bit of a problem because it gets kind of bright but it is easy to see and as you'll see when we do the target shooting uh, how well it did. I was shooting about 20 yards, not too bad, using a Winchester Wildcat, which is just their basic bulk white box ammo. Uh, you know, this is a really good group, second group right here. Uh, the sights, the aperture sight helps. The front sight, it glows and it's easy to find uh, part of the time, but if it's in bright sunlight, it can kind of fade out just a little bit. But uh, I think, as we can see, the accuracy is very good. The U.S. Survival Rifle by Henry Arms, lightweight, it's compact. It's just a really fun gun to shoot. I probably shot about 300 rounds through this thing, not one hiccup. No failures to feed, uh, even when I'm pulling the bolt back, nothing jamming, period. And uh, just really was a lot of fun. Uh, I was using some bulk ammo, so I was a little concerned that that may be a problem. But, you know, it just kept shooting. Here with the barrel, you can see the metal insert all the way through, and then of course the ABS plastic here. The grooved receiver, uh, again, you can put optics on here if you want to. Uh, you're not going to be able to obviously stow the optic into the stock, but it is an option for other things that you might want to do with this rifle. The butt cap is on there pretty tight, and what I really like is the orange here. If you don't have the cap on very well, the orange is going to show through, and I think that's a pretty cool feature uh, just to keep it you know, from uh, not being on there as well as you need to. 
and that also especially if you're going to drop this in water or anything uh, it does keep it floating with the cap on it the cap is kind of a, a soft plastic so it's somewhat pliable there is a groove right here in the magazine and it corresponds with the groove in the back of the stock which fits just very nice in there that way you know your orientation uh, you'll notice that this is a magazine that's loaded and that way when you open this buttstock up if you have loaded magazines you'll know that if they're loaded or not and I think that's a really cool feature you have US survival rifle on one side and the other right here on the side of the action Henry repeating arms they own New Jersey here we have the serial number Henry US survival I'll tell you, looking at this rifle right here in this light, it's a really cool looking design. Again, it's been around since 1958, but it still looks very modern, uh, almost retro. I love it. The rifle is 35 inches assembled and it's 16 inches stowed. It weighs three and a half pounds, so it's really lightweight. Great for camping, great for putting in a boat. Uh, if you're fishing, having something a little extra, an airplane, you know, going backpacking, survival, whatever. I mean, this has a lot of different applications. And, of course, it is a survival rifle. But you can find yourself in a survival situation uh, at any time. And with the small compact size, you can really make it small. You can make it to where it's very portable. And that is really important in a survival situation because typically you need other items as well. Uh, I can slip this in one of my backpacks, which I have. It fits in really nice. Uh, again, it assembles in less than about 30 seconds. Very quick. And with the low pressure 22 rounds, you don't have to be worried about pressures with the barrel. Now, one of the things you will need to do is to keep check on your barrel nut. Uh, it can kind of start to get a little loose after repeated shooting. But I shot this rifle, probably shot about 300 rounds through it today, and I tightened it toward the end, and that was the only time I had any, any tightening. And it was very little. So it wasn't like it was about to come off. They do recommend using high velocity 22. Uh, I was using different bulk ammunition. I had no hiccups whatsoever. Not one. Not any problems. Uh, I've heard a couple of times where people with real low velocity ammunition have had some issues. But, uh, you know, keep good ammunition in your rifle. This is not one that you're going to put a thousand rounds through. Uh, this is one you're going to just shoot. I, I would highly suggest CCI Mini Mags. They're some of the highest velocity out there, or the Stingers. You know, but I was using regular Remington and Winchester, and I was not having any problems whatsoever. 22 is definitely not known as a self-defense round, but it is lethal. And in a dire situation, this could definitely come in handy, uh, being so compact, easy to stow, and all the other reasons why this rifle is called the U.S. Survival Rifle. For field maintenance and cleaning, uh, to remove your bolt, first thing you do is go ahead and charge the bolt back. Pull out your charging handle, and this is going to actually cock the action, and you need it that way to get the bolt out. Then take your finger and just depress the bolt a little bit, and then you can pull out your charging handle. And then the bolt assembly comes right out. You have two recoil springs and they fit on this guide rod. Then you can clean, maintain the bolt, and uh, really simple. And that's all there is to field stripping. If you don't charge the bolt and cock the rifle, the hammer's going to be in the way and you're not going to be able to get your guide rods out. It's going to lock itself in. It's going to be very difficult. Don't ask me how I know that. <laughs> uh, but you can see right here, you have your ejector right here and the little groove in the uh, guide rods will go through that. For reassembly, just sit your springs back into the holes in the back of the bolt. Go ahead and put on your guide rod assembly. And then just take care to go over that uh, extractor or ejector. Push your bolt back in, line it up with the hole, charging handle goes in and you're done. And that comes in the traditional black you see here and then it also comes in a camouflage pattern which is a mossy oak breakup pattern. I really like the looks of the, the camo version. The MSRP on the black runs $290. Uh, I saw it on a couple of places for around the $230 range. Uh, the camo version runs a little bit more uh, 350 MSRP, but I've seen those at about $275.
So you have two really cool options if you want the camo pattern and the advantages. If you don't care, you can go with the black. One of the great things about the black version is Sean Connery and From Russia With Love used one of these in the movie in 1963. Of course, they said it was a 25 caliber <laughs> instead of a 22, but still a really cool, iconic piece. Now with the camo version, I'm doing a totally separate video about using this as a survival rifle and some of the practical aspects of this rifle for that reason with a lot of other things. So check out my Sensible Prepper channel. I'll have a link to the video right here for you to check out as well. I mainly wanted to get into the specifics of the black version and what this rifle is about and then maybe go into more of the survival side of it with my Sensible Prepper channel. You can also find me on Instagram at Such underscore zero zero and on Facebook at Such zero zero Fun Gun Reviews Facebook page. And I do a lot of things that I don't do on the channel on both of those. A lot of upcoming things that I'm getting ready to review, things I'm testing, uh, ideas, a lot of political stuff we do on those outlets, those social media outlets. Now go to HenryRifles.com, check out all the information there on the website. Uh, one of the things about Henry Rifles, and with the AR-7, but also with their lever action guns, they have really change the face of this gun and with a lot of these lever actions uh, competing even superior to Marlin and the Winchesters. Uh, they're just doing an excellent job. Everything made here in the United States. A really great up and coming company, gun company. Uh, in fact, I've been watching some of 22 Plinksters trick shots using some of the lever action Henry 22s and it's got me thinking. So uh, check out HenryRifles.com just an excellent source for really high quality rifles made here in the USA. The US Survival Rifle by Henry Repeating Arms. Thumbs way up. Be strong, be of good courage. God bless America. Long live the Republic. Is that it keeps uh, and one of the thing though of course one of the thing about one of the things about the ABS plastic not only in the stock but also in the barrel is that it keeps it um, now we're gonna go ahead and double check to make sure the gun is unloaded and well we need that already okay Henry Henry repeating Henry repeating arms Bayonne New Jersey you have Henry repeating arms you know, I like both of them, and so I just got both of them. I couldn't. <laughs>